now that our application is almost complete, we're now ready to start thinking about ways we can make money from our app. Now the application that we're currently creating is going to be a free application. Well, it's entirely up to you. You can choose to have it a paid version or a free version. But many developers face this problem when we're creating free applications in general. We can put a lot of hard work, blood, sweat, tears, many months, weeks, years in developing an application for it to be free. And sometimes you may feel like you need to get compensated for the time and effort that you may have put in. Now, there's many great ways in how we can earn money from our applications, whether that be the ability to display ads within our app. You know, we give up a small uh, amount of real estate with an application. In return, we show an ad to our user and we earn a little bit of revenue. Other alternatives are in-app purchases. We can uh, allow our users to buy stuff within the app and in return, they get some extra content, which they're going to be loving, and we get a little bit of extra money in our pocket. Now, in this lecture, we're going to be combining the both of them, banners and in-app purchases. And how we're going to do it is we're going to be displaying ads within the application. We've got three views all in total, so we're going to be displaying three banners within our application. Now, where does in-app purchases come into it? How are we going to integrate this in? Well, we're going to be using in-app purchases as a way of allowing our users to purchase the ability to remove the ads from the application. So either way, we're going to be getting money or revenue from displaying ads, or we're going to get one solid straight off payment to remove the ads. Uh, and it's an overall great experience for everyone. It doesn't, you know, intimidate the user playing the game. They can play the game with the ads being displayed, or they can have the ability to remove them for a small fee. So we're going to be focusing in this lecture on the ability to add uh, banners in. And we're going to be using the Google AdMob framework. So I'm going to jump straight over to on the internet right now. If you don't have a Google AdMob account, I suggest you sign up for one. It's a great platform to earn revenue from advertising within our applications. And once you have, just head over to the monetize section and then go to monetize a new app. Now, if your app already exists on the um, App Store, we can then simply search it uh, via iTunes App Store. Or if you're creating it for the first time, like we are today, uh, then simply add your application manually. So I'm going to call my application or give it a name. Let's call it Tappy Hands. Now, the reason we add it in is so when we come to start reporting and seeing our applications earning money, we can see which application is making the most. Again, we've selected what platform it is. So we're going to select iOS, and once you're done, we're then going to add the application. So once we've added it in, it gives us an app ID, uh, which we'll be using and adding in our application, so we can then start to receive, um, again, our ads. And we're going to be focusing on banner ads. So we're going to select banner, and then we have the ability to adjust or change uh, how the banner gets displayed. So make sure that you've selected both image and text, both of these options here. Uh, this is the kind of the best way to enable yourself to maximize the amount of revenue you can earn. You earn more revenue from banner or from image ads than you would do from simple text ads. Then it comes down to our automatic refresh. So you can choose how often the banner itself refreshes. Again, you know, the more times it's refreshing, the more ads it's showing. But incentively, you just you know, basically want to try and get as many clicks as possible to actually earn you know, enough money. So just leave that simply on Google optimized. Text uh, ad style. Now, this is for when there's no image ads to be displayed. Obviously, then you get a text ad. So this, you can then simply customize all the different colors of how a text ad appears within your application. So just for now, I'm going to leave it simply blank and basic, and I'm simply called this ad unit banner. And again, when it comes to reporting what ads in your application are making the most money, by giving them ad names, we can see which ones are doing that. And then simply press save. Now, once you press saved, we've now pretty much all set up. We've been given our app ID name. We've been given our banner name. We're not going to be using Firebase, so we just simply press skip. And then what we need to do now then is download the Google Mobile Ads SDK. Now, in previous sections of this course so far, when we've been developing an application, when it comes to the ability to share the content via Twitter, email, or SMS, we were relying on certain frameworks to give us the ability to do that. And this is pretty much what this is. It's a framework that we're going to be referencing to display ads, again, within our application. So simply click that, and then simply go to download 
the Google Mobs add SDK iOS file and then that now downloads so once it has we're then going to simply unzip it and you can see now we've got the framework within our folder so before we go any further then we're going to simply jump into our project now there we go and we're going to simply drag and drop this framework into our frameworks folder here I'm going to make sure that we slap copy items if needed and also that we've added it to our targets. That's very important as well. And then finish and add that in. And there we go. We now have this Google Mob uh, Mobile Ads framework now within our project. This is something that Xcode doesn't provide. Uh, this is an external framework provided by Google themselves. So all we need to do is just drag and drop it in and we pretty much got it in. So now becomes the exciting part where we now integrate and then start to add the ads within our application. So it can be quite confusing, but Google does a really, really good job. You can see now if I go back to our original tab here, we have this follow the SDK integration guide, which is pretty much this getting started guide here. And then if I scroll down now, it gives you a, you know, a brief example of how we integrate ads in. Uh, but you know, we're going to go through this process step by step now and make it a little bit more simplified. But the only section on here that we're going to be kind of focusing on is the banner ads section there. This is what we're going to be working with. Now, the banner ads have various different sizes that we can potentially use. So you can see here, if you had a, a 320 by 50 banner, it's called the K, uh, G, A, D, ad size, banner, and so on with different names. So we're going to be coming back to this when we go to choose what size we want within our project. So before we go any further then, we're going to jump into Xcode once more. And what we're going to do now is we're going to import uh, that framework into every view that we want to display the ads in. So let's start with our view controller then. We want to have a banner ad in each of the three views. So let's scroll all the way to the top. And just like how we imported all the other frameworks, we just simply type in import and then the name of it, which in our case is Google Mobile Ads. Now, providing you imported the framework incorrectly and you selected targets, this should automatically and manually appear. So let me go through each one. Scroll to the very top. Import our Google Mobile Ads. And again, for our final view, scroll back to the top where we got two other frameworks imported as well. Import our Google Mobile Ads. Perfect. So we've got them all in each view. And what we're going to do now is solely focus on our view controller.swift here to understand it before we then apply it to all the additional views. So the first thing we're going to do as well, then, after our UI view controller here, is we're going to do a comma, space, and add in our Google AdMob banner view delegate there we go so this will give us the ability to read some of the functions that we're going to be adding in to control and change how it interacts on the screen at certain times now once we got that in we're going to jump in to our main dot storyboard and then we're going to zoom in and again focus solely on the first view before we apply it to the rest so we need to add in now a banner view within our application, pretty much the same as how we add in our objects, select where we want it and add the constraints. Now we don't really have a Google banner view within the objects. Again, it was an external framework. So how do we kind of do this? Well, what we do is scroll down all the way to the bottom where we have the ability to add in a simple UI view. Now this UI view, we can simply use this, change how it interacts and change the type of object it is to become our Google banner view. So before we go any further then, let's choose exactly where we want it to be. Now if I refer back on the internet now for the banner sizes, what I want to do is simply use a smart banner. Because we created this universal application which is going to resize for us on all different iPhones and potentially eventually it will be on iPad 2. This smart banner pretty much does everything for us. So a smart banner is basically a standard banner, 320 by 50. Now the height of it stays fixated at 50. Uh, the kind of width here is always going to simply be changing. So as you can see here, it's the screen width, no matter what screen size you're going to get as big as small, by 32, 50 or 90. Now a smart banner here has 50 size for the height there. We're, we're going to solely be using that height for our project. The screen width does not matter because a smart banner can simply, you know, adjust for it. So in our interface then, 
Let's bring down our kind of um, size inspector here. Let's fixate this height to 50 so we know exactly how high it's going to be. That's pretty much what the height is going to be. So where shall we actually place this banner? Well, we've got to be thinking, and again, you're going to think this throughout the whole of the design of the application, is you don't really want it to be intruding on the application to the point where the user can't use it. But you also want the ads to be quite, you know, not quite dominant, but there and, you know, that there is a possibility our user can click on it. So what we could do is place them at the very bottom of each view. Now, if I put this right into the corner and size it all the way over, I mean, it's pretty much dominant that it's there, but it's not so much in the way that it's going to intrude on the button itself. Uh, and again, if our user wants to remove the ads, eventually we're going to have it set up for an in-app purchase. So not always are the ads going to be displayed. So that's pretty much where the banner is now going to be. As you can see, I've got this white uh, background for it. But by default, it's still, again, a UI view. So how do we change this then? Well, what we do is we go to the Identity Inspector. And again, we're on our view here. And uh, we need to simply change what it is. So if we're in the class, what we need to do is add in our Google AdMob Banner View. And by adding that into the class there, we're simply changing up what this view simply is. So now, if I bring up the assistant editor, and what you'll now see is making sure that we're in our view controller.swift. If I go to the section where we add in our outlets just here, and I drag and drop this over like normal, the type is no longer a UI view. It's a GAD banner view, a Google AdMob view. So all I'm going to simply do is call it banner view and connect that up as an outlet. Now, the reason we connect it up as an outlet is so we can reference it, tell it what the banner ID is to what we created in AdMob, and also gives us the ability to control it. Now, what I mean by that is if there is an ad to show to our user, then we display the banner. Or if there's not an ad for the user, again, there could be not an ad available to show at that current time, then we make sure that the banner disappears so it doesn't look like a big white rectangle on the screen. We also create it as an outlet as well. Is It's a way to control it when we eventually add in in-app purchases. So obviously remove the banner view if our user paid to do so. So now we've added in the outlet, we're then going to close the assistant editor. And we're then going to go on to add in some constraints to make sure that it adjusts when we change the different view sizes. Now all I'm going to do is pin it to the left, the right, and the bottom of the screen. So bring up our constraints now. So do all that. Don't worry too much about the top one. We're not going to have a constraint at all. And we're also going to fixate its height. So again, it doesn't get adjusted in terms of its height. It stays the exact same. And we're going to add in all of those constraints. So if we go for a bigger iPhone screen, or we start to go a little bit smaller, you can then see how the banner now adjusts. It remains at the exact same height. It's just the width is getting bigger and smaller. And that's exactly what we need it to do. Now, as you can see right now, from the visual side of it, it's a big white rectangle. We kind of don't really want that. So what we're going to do in the Attributes Inspector is we're going to select the background of it here, and we're going to change the opacity all the way down to 0. So initially, you cannot see it's there. It's not only until an ad gets displayed that then it will appear. But we're also going to have some form of level control as well to make it appear and disappear uh, when and where we need it to. So now we're going to jump into our view controller.swift. And this is all going to be set up when the view first loads. So as soon as the view loads up, then we're first going to make sure that our banner view that we created dot is hidden uh, is equal to true. We're going to make sure that the banner is completely hidden from our user. So once we've um, made sure that it's been hidden, we're then going to get our oh, banner view now. So then dot delegate as this is basically going to equal self. And that means if there is then an add to show, we can then create two functions. So if there's an add to show, display the add. If there's not an add to show, make the add disappear. So underneath the view did load, we're going to create two brand new functions. For our, this time, our add, uh, let's start with our add view did receive add. So if there is an add to show, then in this function, we're going to get our banner view dot is hidden to equal false. And then pretty much create an additional function this time for our add view did fail to see receive add with error. 
And this basically means if there's no ad to show or that an error occurred at any point, we're always going to make sure that our banner view is hidden to equal true. Now, you may be thinking if, if there is an error, I mean, the background's completely see through. I mean, wouldn't that disappear? Well, yes, if it was that case, I mean, we don't need to do anything. But if an adder has already appeared and then an error occurs after, you're just going to be stuck remaining with that one ad. We want to make sure it disappears so we're not interrupting our user's experience. And again, these two functions are readable because we set the delegate to itself. So again, it's always reading and seeing what the banner is actually doing. So now we set up that level of banner control, we now need to make sure uh, that we're telling the ad unit what to do. So we're going to get our banner view, let me do dot add unit ID. And we equal this to the ID of what we created. This is what makes it kind of linked to that specific um, kind of ad that you created in AdMob. So we need to jump back into AdMob and go back to our banner. And you can see that we created our banner and it's got an add unit ID. So we need to copy and paste this, jump back into Xcode now, in between the two quotation marks. So every time it is then displays an ad, it knows that it's displaying the exact ad that you created and it's coming from your account, obviously. So once we've told it what ad or where the ads are coming from, we then need to get our banner view and tell it what size it's going to be. So even though we created the size of it in the interface, it still doesn't know what type of size we need to display. So by equaling the ad size to a specific, again, uh, you know, um, smart banner or whatever we were going to set it up to, it knows what it needs to do when it displays the ad. So what do we equal this to then? Well, if we jump back onto the internet and then go back to our banner ads for our guide here, we had a list of all the different ads and we wanted to use the smart banner. Now we're creating our application in portrait. So we simply copy and paste this ad size constant and paste it to what it simply equals to. So when it now displays the ads within our application, it knows where the ads are coming from, what size it needs to do. And because we set up the actual view, the banner view within our interface, then simply, again, it, just, it's just, it works perfectly every time. So all it's left to do now then is get our banner view and then do dot for our root controller and equal that to itself. So we, then we have the ability to get our banner view itself again to then load a request. And then what we're going to be loading is our GAD request, which is just at the bottom here, with our two brackets and close up a bracket on the end there to close it all up. And that's pretty much it. That is all we need to do to display the ads within our application. So again, to give you a quick rundown of what's happening, we've created our banner view. Again, it's got the ID, so it knows where the ad's coming from. It knows what type of ad to display. And because we link the delegate up to itself, it's able to read these two functions. Again, if an ad is available to be displayed, it unhides the banner view to display the ad. Else, if an error occurs or a warning or there's a problem or there's no ads to show at that current time, it then hides the banner view. So now when we go into build and run, we can test this out on the simulator. But the first thing you're going to notice is you may not start to see ads appearing. Now, I believe it can take a good 30 minutes from the time you create the banner in AdMob until you start receiving ads within your application. So if you don't see it straight away, just make sure that you give it some time. It is working. Don't worry. Just give it some time before the connection to be established, you know, for you to start getting ads. So just give it some time before you start seeing um, ads appear in your application. So we're going to go to build and run now and let's see what it looks like. And there we go. So it's been a good 20, 25 minutes for these ads to start appearing in this application. So again, if you don't see them straight away, there is quite a, uh, a significant amount of time before you do start receiving the ads. But I've got my first ad now being displayed within the application. How cool is that? So I can interact with it. And if we click it now, you see we can go to install the application that it's currently advertising or we can click off it, stuff like that. So it is fully interactable. Uh, so the next step now is applying this to the two additional views that we have within our application. So now we know it's all working, we're gonna jump back into our project now. Let's get rid of our debug area there. And the first thing we're gonna do is jump into uh, our game view controller uh, .swift, and we're gonna add the GAD banner delegate to each of these views. So if we simply copy this, jump into this one, 
paste that in there and make sure there's a space after and we'll do it to the end view controller too now this does have the mail and message delegates in too so it's getting quite the list in here now so once we've got all those in we're going to jump into our main dot storyboard now and what i'm going to do is simply select this view copy it and paste it into each of the um, views that we're now adding it in so because it has all the configurations that we already previously want, again, uh, what I'll do now, just for the purpose of being able to see it, I'll make sure the background opacity is now 100%. I'll remove the constraints because we're adding it into a new view, and then re-add them in. So I'll pin them to all the edges around, apart from the one above, and fixate its height at 50. And then we'll bring up the assistant editor, so we'll do each view uh, one by one. Make sure in the game view controller dot swift, and then just after all our labels here, before our variables, I'll drag and drop that over, making sure it's a GAD banner. Yes, it is, and I'll simply call it uh, banner view. Now, if you're doing this manually and you're going to recreate these over and over, make sure that in the identity inspector here that we do have GAD banner view selected as the class as our UI view. Uh, that's very, very important. So back to our standard uh, view now, or standard editor, and uh, we'll paste one in here too. So we'll keep the continuity going throughout the whole of the application. Again, I'll increase the background opacity just so we can clearly see it just for now. And then uh, I'll remove all the constraints, go to add those three around them once more, and fixate its height too. There we go. And then bring up the assistant editor for this one and then go to our end game view controller and I'll scroll all the way to the top now so just after all of our outlets here we'll drag and drop this one in too and uh, simply call this one our banner uh, view as well and connect that up so now we've got all those two added in we've fixated their um, kind of um, positioning now so again if I go for a much larger one you can now see as they move uh, we go much smaller you can see how the banner views now adjust for us perfectly so let's now reduce the opacity so it's completely transparent on both of them. There we go, and this one too. So we now can't see them, perfect, that's exactly what we want. So let's zoom out so we can see all three of them there. So now then, we need to go back into the viewcontrol.swift and uh, how we had this all set up within the view did load. Pretty much, it's going to be identical. There's nothing we need to change. So just to save that little bit of time, I'm going to copy all the code within the view did load and add it to the view did load in each view. So our view did load is here. I'm going to add it to the very bottom of it within the game view controller.swift. There we go. Perfect. And I'll do the exact same thing in the end view controller dot swift as well. So just after our uh, score label becomes our score data, paste it in, in there too. Now, one last thing we need to get as well is the two functions which enable us to hide and reveal the banner view at any given time. Again, whether there is an add to show or one disappears. So we'll copy those. And, then again, and after the view controllers in each one, We'll paste them both in. So that's our game view controller all taken care of. Then we'll jump into our end view um, view controller. So just after our view did load bracket there, paste them in. So it's pretty much we've got them now all in. So if we now build and run an application, we won't have to wait um, another 20 minutes because we're using the same add ID. It's entirely up to you if you want to use different add IDs for the different views, but we're just going to be using the one uh, for the time being. So as the ad now appears, I can then go to start the game. And then a new ad appears, and I can play the game as usual. Again, this is pretty much a regular occurrence in all three applications that we have banner ads within an application. And then once we've finished uh, playing the game, this could be the highest score I've got too. Then switches to our final view, which you can now see displays our third ad. And when we restart the game, it goes back to our first view, dismissing those two views, and in turn dismissing the actual two banners that we're displaying to now be returned to the main view with our one banner. And there we go. So as you release this application on the App Store and people start to use it, you'll then notice in your ad mob um, kind of statistics for this banner that you start to get impressions, clicks, and that's when you start to see revenue start increasing and revenue start gaining uh, within ad mob uh, solely from all of these banners. But 
it's quite a hefty price to pay to earn revenue from a free application because it does mean uh, we are giving up space within an application. It's ad, ad, Ads are never the most beautiful is thing we can add to our applications, which is why we're always going to give our users, when we add the ads in, the option to remove them. Now, I mean, obviously, it does come at a price, and this price is an in-app purchase. So over the next coming lectures, we're going to be integrating in-app purchases and how we can allow our users to pay a small fee to remove the ad ads from the application and have a complete ad-free experience.